Netflix currently houses all manner of big time horror offerings, but away from those more well known pictures, the streaming service is also home to some genuine hidden gems from the horror genre. We've already spotlighted 20 such overlooked delights, but there's still plenty more lurking in the shadows. With that in mind then, I'm Andrew from What Culture Horror, and here are 10 more hidden horror gems on Netflix. Number 10, Vampires vs. The Bronx. From director Oz Rodriguez, this 2020 feature takes the classic vampire movie and puts a whole new spin on things. Bright, breezy, smart and snappy, Vampires vs. the Bronx is a comedy horror with a larger message about gentrification. With Jaden Michaels' Miguel Martinez as the audience is in, this picture sees Miguel and his local community looking to raise money to help out Tony's Bodega, which is a small business on the cusp of going bust due to increased rents. A slew of similar local businesses have already closed their doors and sold up, and Tony's Bodega is merely the next in line. It's soon revealed how vampires, though, have moved into the Bronx and plan to use these vacated buildings as nests where they can keep their coffins. From there, Miguel and his pals watch Blade, do some online research, and make notes on all of the classic ways to fight these bloodsuckers and save their community. Number 9. Before I Wake with Doctor Sleep, The Hauntings of Hill House and Bly Manor, Gerald's Game and Midnight Mass just some of the works on his resume, Mike Flanagan is one of the biggest names in horror. Along with Hush though, Before I Wake is one of Flanagan's projects that often gets overlooked. On the surface, Before I Wake could be taken as your typical, things go bump in the night sort of film. Here we have Mark and Jesse Hobson who foster 8 year old Cody after the death of their own son. It soon becomes apparent that Cody has a unique gift that allows his dreams to manifest into reality. While it warms the hearts of Mark and Jesse when Cody dreams of butterflies, the Hobsons to see Son's favourite animal, it's another thing altogether when these dreams summon the ominous presence of the Canker Man. What Before I Wake really is, is not just a fantastically crafted horror movie, but more importantly, it's a poignant depiction of grief and loss. And there's some really good scares in there too. Number 8, The Deep House. Like certain other pictures of recent years, the driving factor of Julianne Moray and Alexandre Bustillo's The Deep House is the obsession with attaining online clicks. Here we have Lovebirds Ben and Tina as a pair of YouTubers who specialise in exploring spooky locations. With their viewership numbers sagging, Ben in particular is desperate to find the next great score, that unique haunted venue which will bring in huge numbers. In terms of unique, locales don't get any rarer than finding a hidden sanitarium at the bottom of a lake. Having been tipped off by the location of just such a sunken treasure trove, Ben badges Tina into joining him in taking a dive down to what they discover is a remarkably well-preserved building. While that in itself should be an immediate red flag, our central characters soon find bizarre torture devices, scratches on walls, and a few terrifying, again well-preserved, corpses. Hey, sometimes those likes, comments, and subscribes just are not worth the hassle. Number 7. Mom and Dad is mom and dad crazed Nicolas Cage at his most crazed Nicolas Cage? Quite possibly. Not to be confused with 2008's Mum and Dad, Mom and Dad finds Cage and Selma Blair as parents in a struggling, strained family unit, which also includes teenager Carly and youngster Joshua. The strains shown amongst this unit are ones not exactly unfamiliar to many of us. There's the dull, squabbling married couple, the angsty teen who loves to push her parents' buttons, and the father with a disdain for the boy his daughter is dating. What makes mom and dad different to the real world though, is that it takes place in a world where a sudden nationwide TV and radio broadcast compels parents to kill their children. Of course, this gives Cage, and Selma Blair to a lesser extent, the chance to go all in as an erratic, unhinged, completely over the top monster, laser focused on murdering his offspring. With plenty of dark comedy, social commentary, and a healthy dollop of gore, the end result is an utter blast. Number 6, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Yes, as in Sweeney Todd, and no, not the Johnny Depp one. Black and white movies may not be for everyone, but 1936's The Demon Barber of Fleet Street is an absolute treat for those who like to take a trip back to the early days of cinema. A Victorian horror drama, this spin on the infamous Barber has Todd Slaughter in the title role, and Slaughter magically menaces his way through the film's brisk 71 minutes. 
Of course, Sweeney Todd is a barber who likes to rob and murder wealthy clients. And in terms of the murder aspect, Sweeney uses a lever to drop unsuspecting victims from his barber's chair to his basement, which is a basement he shares with Mrs. Lovett and her pie shop. And between them, Todd and Lovett strip the corpses of anything of value. What makes this a particular hidden gem is how it's a fantastic, charming look into the past and a fine adaptation of the legendary tale of Sweeney Todd. Number five. I Came By I Came By initially centres on pals Toby and Jay, a couple of early 20s graffiti artists who like to target the homes of the rich and the corrupt. The relationship between these two friends though becomes strained when Jay's partner becomes pregnant. Opting to hang up his spray can so that he can devote his attention to the prospect of fatherhood, Jay's wish for a quiet life is one that's not matched by Toby. As shown by Toby deciding to go solo in targeting the house of a former judge, Sir Hector Blake. Having discovered an abducted man in this judge's basement, Toby is desperate to convince Jay and the police that something sinister is unfolding at the Blake residence. The problem is, his friend won't listen to him and a police visit to the house wields no results. Avoiding any further plot points here, Hugh Bonneville, who's more known for lighter, cheerier roles in the likes of Downton Abbey and the Paddington movies, is phenomenal as Hector Blake in a role that very much goes against what one might expect from the Golden Globe and Emmy Award nominated actor. Number 4, 47 Meters Down While the Meg and the Shallows may have received mainstream attention in recent years, one solid shark offering which many slept on is Johannes Roberts' 47 Meters Down. This 2017 picture finds sisters Kate and Lisa embarking on a cage dive while vacationing in Mexico. That dive goes awry when the cable attaching the cage to its boat becomes loose and thus our siblings find themselves stuck in a shark cage on the ocean floor 47 meters down. Having lost radio contact with the surface and with their oxygen slowly running out, Kate and Lisa are left with quite the pickle as they become swarmed by great white sharks. Do they sit tight and wait for help and risk running out of air, or do they attempt to swim to the surface and take their chances with the sharks? There's 47 meters down up there with a Jaws or a Reef in terms of the all-time greats of the shark subgenre? Likely not, but that doesn't stop this shark feature from being a hugely effective tense tale that deserves to reach a wider audience. Number 3. We Have a Ghost the most recent release to feature on this list, We Have a Ghost, was released directly to Netflix earlier this year, but it hasn't managed to pick up the attention it deserves. In terms of premise, the Presleys, headed up by Anthony Mackie's Frank, buy an old abandoned house which just so happens to be home to a spirit. Rather than the sort of presences seen in Poltergeist or Paranormal Activity, this ghost is more in line with Casper, as in he's a friendly fella who they name Ernest. Upon discovering Ernest, young Kevin Presley is keen to trace the Spectre's story and help him find peace. While Frank, well, Frank's more concerned about using Ernest to garner YouTube clicks and making his family famous. While this is very much a horror film, We Have a Ghost is clearly on the lighter side, with plentiful humour and heart at play in a way that makes this the sort of fright fest that's perfect for all the family. And let's face it, it doesn't always have to be about the major scares and the hard gore. Number 2. Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight As a somewhat grumpy so-and-so who's likely more into middle age than you realise is, your host here very much appreciates Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight's approach to the online world and social media. As in, the film centres on a camp where mobile phones, tablets and the like are all banned. Praise be to the Lord. You see, this camp is designed to encourage real-life human interaction and remove the reliance on staring at screens 24-7. Of course, this being a horror film, such devices being off the table makes it incredibly unfortunate when our campers find themselves in the midst of a couple of murderous, mutated beings. In the 2020 Polish language movie, this Bartosz M. Kowalski helmed effort is a belter, mixing classic tropes of slasher, supernatural and creature features. Added to that, there's some great gore, some magnificent special effects works, and Julia Venewa puts in a phenomenal performance as our lead character Sasha. As an added bonus, Netflix also currently houses the imaginatively titled 2021 sequel, Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight, Part 2. Number 1, Veronica. 
While Wreck, which he co-wrote and co-directed, often rightly gets so much love, Paco Plaza's Veronica is a horror offering which unfortunately went under the radar upon its release in 2017. Still, some of those who have seen the picture have labelled Veronica as the scariest movie ever to be on Netflix. Of course, such a label is very much subjective, but this based on true events film is undoubtedly an unsettling, terrifying experience. In terms of those true events, Veronica is loosely based on the mysterious death of Estefania Gutierrez Lazaro in 1991. Estefania passed away at the age of 18 after suffering hallucinations and convulsions, aggressively growling at grunting at her family and friends, and having her family home stalked by eerie shadows. This all came on the back of a Ouija board the youngster and her friends had carried out. In Veronica, Sandra Ascasena's titular character is the film's take on Estefania, and Veronica likewise experiences similar trauma to her real-life counterpart. The end result is a movie which will stick with you long after its 105-minute runtime is up, and if Veronica isn't the scariest film to ever be featured on Netflix, it's absolutely in the conversation for that particular accolade. So that's our 10 more hidden horror gems on Netflix. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, turn those notification bells on, and come and give us a follow on Twitter at What Culture Horror. While you're there, you can find myself at Culture Left Peg, but most importantly, be sure to have the best possible day. Whether you're doing something or whether you're doing absolutely nothing, I hope it goes well for you. And if things aren't going so well, I really hope they turn around as soon as possible. I've been Andrew Pollard for What Culture Horror, and I'll catch you down the road.